will signify the uh, LVOT obstruction. While in a, um, there is probably parabolic uh, signal in case of volvular uh, obstruction. Plus anything which is seen on the Doppler envelope, which is classical of uh, 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 Hocam. Is the uh, uh, dagger pattern uh, yeah. is the classical? I think we can continue. Uh -huh. uh, so sir, uh, this was the spectral representation of the continuous wave Doppler uh, across the LVOT. Uh, showing the uh, gradient of peak gradient of uh, 160 uh, mm mercury, uh, the significant uh, gradient, and um, yes. uh, this is the uh, uh, Dr. Jasiraj. The patient has significant symptoms. When you are doing an echo, gradient is coming just 20. What do you do? Patient has a significant symptoms. His functional class is uh, three actually, and you, you are not getting a good gradient. Just uh, so, would you leave at that stage, or what do you do? Uh, uh, we can uh, do some uh, dynamic maneuver, like uh, we can uh, take the echo in a standing position, or ask the patient to do a, a, a strain phasing well solar, uh, and we can get. Uh, well, okay, you can do it uh, for auscultation for echo. They are a little difficult. You can't get better images and all. What do you do? Any other uh, technique by which you can uh, bad side, uh, administration. demonstrate a dynamic obstruction? Uh, bad side administration of the amyl nitrite. Amyl nitrite is not a... Have you seen amyl nitrite or have you used amyl nitrite? Because I think still continues to be mentioned in the textbook. In fact, once we wrote to Bronwald actually, whether to include and uh, keep it or to take it out actually. Even sublingual nitroglycerin is enough. The, uh, I mean, excellent uh, provocation. Give sublingual nitroglycerin and uh, record your, I mean, check your gradient. So we did this with sublingual nitrate only, the sorbitrate. Yeah. Uh, we do it with sorbitrate, not even glycerol trinitrate. Sorbitrate. Sorbitrate, sorbitrate. helps it. Yeah. Even in cath lab, we have seen. Whenever we are doing this uh, procedure, I mean, you give intravenous or whatever it is. So actually, sublingual nitrates. Is, uh, this. Amyl nitrate, I, I think it's not available. No, no, not available. Not available. Not available. Uh, okay. Any MR is there? Uh, sir, um, yes, sir. Patient did had uh, moderate, uh, did have moderate MR, but unfortunately, yes. I don't have the uh, clippings. No, no issue. No issue. That X-ray, that X-ray was good enough to tell that there was MR. How often you get MR in ECO in patients with HOCM? As a patient uh, um, having a same in LVT obstruction, a patient will be having uh, a MR. It's in all patients, 100% patient. patients. In echocardiography, you get it in 100% patients. Uh, this is the spectral representation of the uh, tissue Doppler taken at the septal uh, uh, mitral leaflet. Showing the uh, E dash and A dash, uh, the, uh, the E, um, this uh, the velocity seen, uh, velocity is less than uh, eight centimeter per second, suggestive of uh, diastolic dysfunction. This is the aortic um, uh, aortic uh, tracing showing. Um, a systolic blood pressure of 100 and actual blood pressure 74 with the there is spike and a dome appearance. Next. Uh, this is the simultaneous, uh, simultaneous tracing of the uh, LV and aortic tracing. Uh, there is the uh, gradient of around uh, um, uh, around gradient of uh, around uh, LV to aortic gradient is 50. And the aortic tracing is showing a spike and drop. So this is the um, uh, gradient at the uh, below uh, subaortic level. Yes. Uh, uh, this tracing is uh, showing a uh, uh, broken row uh, moro phenomenon in which uh, we are seeing that after VPC, there is a uh, um, 
increase gradient and there is a decrease decrease aortic systolic pressure and uh, accordingly pulse decrease pulse pressure so there is the uh, increase gradient with decrease pulse pressure which is the suggestive of uh, obstructions at the subaortic level what is the mechanism of this uh, by um, uh, using vpc uh, we increases the uh, post vpc contractility which increases the uh, aortic obstruction and uh, uh, so the lv pressure is increased but due to obstruction that is not transmitted to the aorta so systolic pressure is uh, less and pulse pressure decreases and this uh, pressing is broken down what is the uh, cellular level defect uh, in the phenomena which is responsible so when you create an ectopic what happens to the myocardial cell what comes in a premature bleed brings out what uh, in tight inside the cell cytoplasm there is a release of calcium from the sarcopenic reticulum so which uh, what is the problem in hocm there is a um, uh, increase uh, ectopic myosin uh, uh, bridging increase myosin acting bridging which is calcium dependent so by increasing pressing calcium we are uh, giving more cross bridging and that will increase the contractility which is impaired in the hocm so calcium handling cytokinetic level is lost and that's why the brunwald rockenberg phenomena comes into play good so these are three Uh, traces, hypothetical traces. This is not from the patient to Dr. Jayasraj. Can you explain the different traces and which one is compatible with valvular, supravalvular, or subvalvular veins? Uh, on the first tracing, uh, we have uh, LV tracing, and uh, the catheter is uh, pulled back. And in the second uh, second part, the diastolic pressure is equal to aorta, but still there is a uh, gradient. So it is a uh, it is a sub aortic. That is a HOCM. Uh, a, so first, second, and third. First one is first. First one of uh, there is in first there is a um, gradient. It is supravalvular. It is supravalvular, uh, uh, and in middle uh, there is a uh, one there is gradient in the aorta. Okay. Yes, a gradient in aorta. That is supravalvular, and in middle it is a uh, at the level of valvular. And while in the third tracing uh, we have a diastolic uh, a pressure of LVS, and there is a no gradient left. So it is a sub aortic. The first one, the gradient is in aorta. The last one, gradient is in LV. Okay. So, can there be differential diagnosis for the first one, apart from your uh, supravalvular? Uh, in coarctation of aorta, we can have this. Yes, gradient will be in the aorta only. Okay. What is Carbello's sign? That also is a false differential of oh. Carbello's sign. in um, carbello sign uh, we have a critical stenosis like 0.6 uh, cm square and uh, we are uh, uh, across the uh, wall and after removing the wall uh, there is a not removing the wall catheter okay uh, after uh, removing the catheter uh, we do have a, a improvement in the uh, gradient that's a suggestive of critical stenosis and carbello sign which gradient is used for clinical decision making in hocm like is it mean peak to peak or what uh, in hocm uh, we use peak uh, gradient for uh, decision to make for uh, septal reduction, uh, reduction therapy that is it sir from my side So what will you do for this patient? LBBB. Uh, this is patient is having uh, age of thirty, uh, younger age, and also having uh, LBBB. And uh, patient have a significant MR from echo or uh, um, from cardiomegaly. Syncope. And uh, history of patient is uh, having a uh, syncope of urban and syncope. So first uh, we will evaluate him for uh, ICD uh, evaluation. And uh, patient is have sustained VT. Uh, so. Uh, he will be candidate for icd first and the patient is having nih class 3 symptom so first uh, we will try for uh, we'll medical we'll leave the obstruction first or you will put the icd first uh, we will uh, put the icd first no why not why will you do that you will create a scar later on and then you'll end up with the storm so you always first do the evaluation do the you may require i mean he's already having you may do a halter you may look at the cvmr look at the later gadolinia enhancement Medical optimizing, then subject him to myomectomy, and at the time of discharge, you can put an ICD. 
straight away rather than you know put in an icd and then do a surgery and then reevaluate and then maybe he's just firing because you've removed some muscle from his heart which is now ir ir irritable so first leave the obstruction that put then put an icd okay correct i think dr uh, dr bang i think that yeah, you yeah i think excellent excellent cases excellent discussion and uh, really superb uh, first case second case uh, excellent everything was very good i request dr manjunath to give a closing remark yeah anyway i think uh, it's almost uh, 7:15 so we'll I'll not take much time so as usual uh, this program has gone very well with uh, excellent uh, presentation uh, one coming from mata amrutananda Uh, my hospital cochin and the other one is from ahmedabad uh, un mehta hospital both are really educative and uh, great decision making because again i emphasize decisions making are more important than incisions and decision making is more important than interventions so because uh, anyway the treatment should not be more harmful than the disease so in text uh, the first case was really a great eye opener because we come across uh, various uh, shunt lesions with the borderline uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension systolic pressure 80 90 and uh, the one should be extremely careful when we are advising surgery surgical closure for those situations because in case uh, if we inadvertently close thinking that uh, everything will pa pressure will come down then we will converting an eisenmenger into a pph and uh, virtually shortening their life span so the again the Uh, i think stethoscope is still relevant and the echocardiographic interpretation is extremely important that's what uh, all these uh, cases uh, have shown us and anyway whenever uh, the uh, case i mean your clinical findings are not matching with the echo it is better we should review echo and review uh, these uh, i mean cath lab data that is uh, extremely important and another uh, thing is Uh, ecg interpretations are extremely important it was also discussed in the case one <clears throat> and uh, one should also uh, because nowadays uh, still we see some eisenmenger uh, cases probably you should never see eisenmenger cases at all early recognition is extremely important uh, because now the um, i mean all states have got a good uh, surgical program and interventional programs So early recognition because we should not miss shunt lesion so it is a, a criminal to miss a shunt lesion uh, that is very important because they are all treatable and uh, sh the beauty of the shunt lesion is uh, it is a lifetime cure whether it is asd vsd or a pd it's a lifetime a cure so that is the greatest uh, message because uh, i mean and again uh, auscultation still uh, we should uh, keep uh, nowadays uh, people uh i mean rarely uh, use stethoscope we should continue to use uh, stethoscope you all those things, uh, digital stethoscopes all those things are there there is nothing like uh, our using our own uh, stethoscope it is uh, relevant in fact i will just uh, take a minute to tell how important is auscultation a few years ago there was a patient uh, he underwent uh, lumbar disc surgery and post operatively developed severe breathlessness and uh, yes usually they think it is uh, acute pulmonary embolism because post operatively patient has developed uh, severe breathlessness and uh, so then they have put a ivc filter but there was a huge swelling of both the legs and patient continues to have a lot of breathing difficulty then they came to us i was auscultating uh, even the back interscapular area i was hearing some murmur then i went on auscultating down and down it was heard up to the iliac crest actually surprisingly then um, i we did an echo and pulmonary flow was increased normally pulmonary embolism pulmonary flow will be decreased so i was thinking i was sure that there was some arteriovenous communication because pulmonary flow was two times the normal then we did an angiogram and uh, there was a common iliac artery common iliac vein communication while uh, doing the lumbar disc surgery orthopedic surgeon has injured and uh, that was uh, but for auscultation i would not have picked up and interpretation of echo is also uh, very very important that's what i agree in these days of uh, ex uh, i mean uh, explosion of interventional cardiology clinical teaching program has taken a back seat so this sort of meeting will really 
uh, help us to uh, i mean reorient not only uh, the students us also see so we learn a lot from this meeting and dr uh, vijay bank's lecture was very good the natural history of aortic valve disease and again in valvular heart disease uh, the timing and type of intervention is very very important timing and type of intervention is important it should not be too early and it should not be too late and uh, so definitely and uh, uh, the second case is also although it is straight forward in the examination you know it is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, well in advance but still you should always try to give a differential diagnosis straight away you should not tell uh, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy because then discussion may not be an hypertrophic cardiomyopathy at all it could be something uh, else so i think um, both uh, mr farooq and jaswaj have done an excellent job and uh, it was a nice program and uh, yes bye bye uh, dr yeah, dr krishna kumar wants to say something please krishna kumar dr shantanu and dr kamal can we uh, we request the candidates who are presenting i think uh, we must balance we must essentially make sure that they get their foundations right they integrate it clinical findings well with echocardiography and all the investigations they interpret ecg all those things are valid but sometimes we lose our way and end up asking so much about history and physical exam that we leave very little time for clinical decision making which dr manjunath was emphasizing and i find that that's a big lacuna in our students they don't know how to decide i mean the last case illustrated where when dr sharma asked the question what is the sequence there again you know a thinking a critical thinking was missing so i think we need to have a balance between both the elements exam but it's some we need to emphasize making he this, this is one thing board in every every d not adequately test not giving the scenarios where you have to take and you know that's an element that we have to train our students absolutely i fully agree with that and big thank you to all the faculty and the pg student who have presented and of course attendees we we are always always very happy to see a lot of attendees and their feedback is so good they are asking for monthly meeting though we have uh, no program to do monthly meeting two monthly is quite good and uh, faculty and the cases everything and discussion was superb in first case and second case also uh i think thank you very much to everybody look forward for the fourth uh, it, it will come somewhere in july okay thank you faculty very much thank you sir okay you. bye 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 bye, bye. hope the covid will be less at that time <laughs> let us hope <laughs> <laughs> correct correct okay bye bye